of brotherly <laughs> stroll through the PC games of the 90s and early 2000s. My name is Bob. Ah! <laughs> what the fuck was that? Did you, you see a spider? <laughs> oh, oh you scared the shit out of me. So this is actually the second time we're doing uh, this intro oh, segment man. because I blue screened twice in a row. I don't even remember the last time I saw a blue screen of oh. death. BSOD. Yeah, you got you got two blue screens in a row. Yeah. So the only thing we uh, uh, well, you know, uh, doesn't matter. We're starting from the top again. That's why Jim they don't did know that what they don't know. Exclamation, Jim! You didn't even say your name. Oh, I'm Jim. Jim. Well, you kind of just said it for me. Let's talk about this game for the first time today. Yeah. And you know what that game is? No. Spy Fox in dry cereal came out in 1997, out of Humongous Entertainment. Uh, Jim, I think it's going to be even better this time. This episode. Uh, what are you talking about? This is the first time. Exactly. Were, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Humongous Entertainment, right? Co-founded by Ron Gilbert. Yep. And Shelley Day. Ron Gilbert, who you might remember from the Monkey Island acclaim, he's a, a very famous developer slash creative because he does kind of the ideas yeah, for the games yeah. and all worked for Lucas Arts. Just came on Lucas Film Games or Lucas yes. Arts Games or wherever they were at that time. Yep, yep, They've yep, shifted yep, names yep, yep. a few times. Yep, he was there and it was there that he developed the Scum engine. S C U M M. This is the first time Jim seeing it. That's why he's smiling and nodding. Yeah. You know what? You, I'm getting ahead of myself here, Jim. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah. take a step back. Let, sure. Let's tell you how this works. First of all, if you're listening right now and you'd like to be watching, uh, you can watch us on YouTube. And the easiest way to do that is probably go to cdromp.com and you can see all the episodes there with the YouTube links. Or you can go to youtube.com and search for CD Romp or search for I Drank Beer, which is our YouTube channel. And we'll talk about that another day, but there's a lot of good stuff there you could watch. Or if you want to just listen and you can go all the way around and you're looking at us, hello, uh, link in the description below. Mm. You can watch, you can listen with uh, all your favorite uh, podcasty type things. So here's how the podcast works uh, every week, we take turns, one of us picks a game. Uh, without the before knowledge of the other okay. uh, brother. Forced. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, we play for three hours. It used to be four. We adjusted it down to three. It's three so far. And then we talk about it. And then uh, it's a podcast. So last week yeah, I picked yep. Spy Fox, which this is the first game that we've played on the show um, that we've played before. In, in our Utes. In our Utes, yeah. As a yeah, Ute. yeah all yeah. the other ones we hadn't played. Uh, so now I'm going to circle my way back to the fact sure. that we're, we've are we done, this is the second, oh, well, okay, yes and no. <laughs> okay. So I was going to say this is the second Ron Gilbert game that we've played, but okay. Escape from Monkey Island, which was the first episode of the show, is the fourth in the series, Jim, not the third. Okay. And Ron Gilbert was only around for the first two. So, yeah, kind of his, him, his but not. game, brainchild. How about that? I've heard him talk about the third one, uh, which he said was good. He enjoyed it. He said they did things that he wouldn't have done, notably uh, having um, Guy Brush uh, marry that chick, the sword uh-huh. chick. He said he uh-huh, wouldn't have done uh-huh. that. Uh, he didn't say anything about the fourth one. At okay. All. He didn't mention it. So that means maybe, he has no maybe he's comments pretending, or criticism. Maybe he doesn't even know what happened. He's probably better off. But yeah, so Ron Gilbert... He was working at uh, LucasArts, Lucas Films. I think he went from there directly to founding Humongous Entertainment. Here's 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 how it happened. Okay. Oh, okay. uh, tell me. He was watching a little kid play Maniac Mansion. Okay. And he realized that the little kid had no idea what the crap was going on because they couldn't read and there was no voice acting. So and they were just like clicking their way around like crazy. There was all kinds of little crazy oh, things so they, going they on. They were watching me play Mist. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So they were just like enjoying the game without really having any idea what was going on. And okay. then he was like, "Wait a second. Why don't we make like adventure games?" Which was his thing. Um, Maniac Mansion and I mean, uh, Monkey to be fair, Island are both I, adventure I think games. The majority of games at that time were adventure games. I don't think that's correct at all. Oh, okay. I think it well, it was a much more popular genre than it is now. But I don't uh, think it was the biggest genre. I don't know what the popular genres are think now. Think of games like Doom at the time were super crushing. So here's the thing, like how much yeah. people like them and appreciate them now doesn't a hundred percent translate to sales figures then. And that might be an ep- an interesting episode for us just to do a, you know, what was hot at the time. Yeah, maybe. So, yeah. So I actually don't so <laughs> 
re 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 bringing it back. This okay. game was really hard to find uh, information on. There wasn't a lot on the game specifically, but there was a lot on uh, Ron Gilbert. Yeah, maybe people Humongous just don't really care that much. I don't think they were really documenting things that much. Yeah, and again, I mean, because it was a kid's game. Yeah, I, I think, mean, yeah, I, I don't know how much uh, real record keeping or like back checking people are doing on like the history and development of kids games. Yeah. Um the second what thing I'll mention, do, you know. Uh, what are you gonna do? So the second thing I'll mention about uh Ron Gilbert and Humongous Entertainment is his partner Shelly Day. She handled all the uh the business type stuff. Um and she is renowned for uh creating the putt putt character, but not for okay. the games. It actually started out as a like magical car she made up for her son during bedtime stories that she told him. And then they decided to use it for um, the games. Uh, if you haven't heard of Putt-Putt, it's the first series of uh, kids games that Humongous Entertainment put out. They made a number of them. Um, they made the Putt-Putt series. Then they created the Freddy the Fish series. Then they created the Pajama Sam series. And then Spy Fox came out. And somewhere around there, I should probably mention uh, Backyard Sports, which were really big. Mm. Uh, and so when was Freddy yeah. the Krueger? Freddy the Krueger, I think, was yeah. in the 80s or late oh, 70s. Okay, okay. Yeah. So mm. that's Humongous Entertainment. Um, that's a pretty good chunk about Ron Gilbert. And I think we're going to talk more about him in the future um, when we pick one of his games. Like uh, a different one of his games, like Maniac Mansion or one of the uh, Monkey Island games that people actually like. We don't only have to pick games created this by Ron Gilbert. This is the Ron, Ron Gilbert. Gilbert podcast. Oh, and, you know, uh, and so I have to reissue my apology for Ron Gilbert. Uh, Jim said, you know, this was made by Ron Gilbert, which was probably inaccurate because he wasn't even involved with that game. But the Monkey Island series was. So I guess that's probably accurate. And I said, oh, Ron Gilbert. What is he? Ron Howard's cousin? As a joke, which doesn't even make any sense, but I still feel bad now that I didn't know. Yeah, who I don't he was, understand I why you need to him. apologize for this joke that doesn't I don't make know. any I still, sense. Was, and then I was like, "Oh God, he's like." Even he, if he was his cousin, how would that even be offensive? It's not. He's, he wouldn't be his cousin. People aren't related by first name. Some people are. If you're in Japan, they do the names backwards. Okay, that one you might need to apologize for. <laughs> yeah, I won't <laughs> apologize for that one because that was actually accurate. But here's the thing about uh, Spy Fox and Dry Cereal. It was inspired by uh, Bond movies, yeah, and that uh, one's the Get clear. Smart was, I guess, was a show. Was it a show? Yes, it was a show before yeah. it was a movie. Yeah. yeah. So let me talk about uh, who Spy Fox is and kind of what it's like. I'll give you an overview, uh, and then okay, we'll go through sure. our experience. Yeah. Because now, so here's another thing about the show: whoever picks the game has to do the background research, and then the person who didn't pick the game starts with their play experience. Sure. So the yeah, person okay. who didn't pick the game has to sit through a game the background information that is, won, that is yeah. horribly looked up inaccurate. and probably inaccurate. I will say this is the first Just time. Just so they can then come on the next episode and refute their <laughs> and get, own claims. And get, and get revenge. <laughs> I will say this is the most uh, organized notes that I've ever put together for an episode. Really? So we're getting okay. better. Well, at least Those, I'm, try, I'm trying yeah. to be better. So well, the then first, they'll be beautifully uh, juxtaposed against my notes. Yes, of course. Lots of jux, lots of toes. Um Spy Fox is a spy fox, okay? Oh. And he stars in a series of games. They're adventure games for kids, although they're aimed at a slightly older audience than uh, like the Putt-Putt games, which are for really little kids. And uh, we got a couple different funny characters within the series, okay? Everything's kind of like a parody on Bond. So he's Spy yeah. Fox. Uh, there's Monkey Penny. Yeah. He's yep. supposed to be Money Penny. She's actually a monkey. She is there's a monkey, yeah. Professor Quack. He's a duck, and it's supposed to be Q, like Q, who makes the uh, Bond um, gadgets, if you don't know. But it's a Q, like a quack. And there's Mata Hari instead of Mata Hari. And I don't actually know who Mata Hari is, but it must be something from Bond. Mm, okay. Sounds very bond So those are, those are the, the main characters that are in all the games, I believe. That's why I started there. Um, and I'll talk about the other characters that are this game specific uh, when we're into it. But let me tell you what the game's about. Okay, so the way that it works is there's this guy, his name was uh, William the Kid, and he's yep. a goat, and he's trying to, he wants the whole world to switch over to goat milk, and so he's trying to frame, <laughs> he's trying to frame the cows and 
and get rid of all and then so people hate cows yeah basically he just wants to frame and kill all the cows yeah but what is he framing them for now i can't even remember crime <laughs> i don't think it's crime it's i like think crime. there's something we're forgetting i think he's trying to like flood the earth or something yeah something but basically he wants everyone oh, to eat their cereal with goat milk there was a big rocket like a milk rocket that he's like shooting to somewhere. Jesus fucking Christ. Our job they should is to not be talking about shooting pod. milk rockets. <laughs> I got your milk right, rocket right here. So something like that. And uh, he uh, he's this <laughs> William the Kid is the CEO of the NOG company, which is yeah. stands for Nectar of the Goats. Yeah, which is also it's like nog, like eggnog. Nog, yeah. And which I don't know if that's a thing, but it is nog. The uh, I, I'll uh, add one more point here to about the game overall and then i'll let jim kind of walk you through how it starts and his experience so the um the game takes part on the island of acidophilus yeah which i believe is a uh, kind of yeast for making yogurt or something isn't it uh yes it something is like something that. like that yeah um, they do a lot of puns and jokes yeah. and stuff like that within these games um if you're into that it's cool if you're not into that it's you go like eh, okay yeah for fun you can tell they're having fun it's the for people fun. That, you can tell the it's for fun you can tell the it's people that fun. made it were enjoying it when they did it yeah i would say all right so 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 now it, jim you like pass for me to the torch to you start me out you open the game what's what's cracking oh uh, it's cracking with a lot of cinematics <laughs> um yes well yes okay. i i could tell they went the route of keeping kids entertained by constantly having things happen to them yeah. But not having to trouble them with controlling these interactions. Yeah. So basically just a lot of cinematics. So I found myself, once I figured out the escape button could skip through the cinematics. Well, start. I, start, was, start, I want to pause you real quick. Sorry. Describe the kind of visual style of the game so they know. Like when like you're saying cartoon. cinematics, because it's kind of like cartoon sure, animation. Sure, it's a cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. And the gameplay looks exactly the same as the cinematics. Like it doesn't yeah, skip to yeah, a that's fair. higher I mean, level yeah, of graphics. They, I yeah. made it that way, whether by choice or by not choice. Yeah. I don't remember. By probably you know, on technical purpose. There was a lot of games at the time that like were very cartoon. Actually, this uh, yeah. is kind of late. Uh, especially seven. being a kid's game. I, you probably don't want it to be like a live action fox. <laughs> doing these things as, as interesting as that With would be. With his hair blowing in the Skyrim breeze. Yeah, maybe. So, like, they kind of drop you on this island and then you just kind of have to figure out what to do. They tell yeah. you that you have to find some clues to figure out what's happening with the Nog. And uh, there's, like, a like a cowman that you have to rescue. Jim, let me tell you his name. And so, his sure. name is Howard Hugh Heifer Utterly the Third. So, Hugh So, Heifer. wait. So, his name is Triple H? Yeah, actually it is. <laughs> yes, it actually is Triple H. I, when when I they were saying that. his name, I do remember now. I was thinking Hunter Hen Hunter Helmsley or Hunter whatever. Hunter Helmsley. Yeah, <laughs> very interesting. I didn't think. I wonder. Well, ninety seven. Yeah, Triple H was probably around. I wonder if he was. Yeah, he probably was Triple H. Yeah, I think they just probably wanted it to be Hugh Hefner, but throw in a couple extra things. Yeah, you know? Hugh Hefner utterly. Oh, it's supposed to be like Howard Hughes as well, because Howard Hugh Hefner. I don't remember who Howard Hughes is, but I, think I, he, I don't know. But uh, someone, yeah, so if you're old, you'll know who he is. So it's shout out um, not exactly point and click so much as you have to use the mouse to control what's going on. Because so they how didn't does have... that differ than point and click? Um, I don't know. <laughs> so I guess it is. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I just imagine point and click. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Being this a little like a, more, very, a little bit more rudimentary. Very, how do you, how much more rudimentary than you get than point and click children's inventor adventure games? It is I definitely would say, point and click. I don't know. I don't know. What do you want? Less things to move on the screen? Yeah. Would that yeah make maybe so like missed. missed. Yeah. yeah. I want it to be missed. It's very Basically. missed like in its controls. Really? So in a way Except it's it missed like in its controls in that it kind of, so I don't want to relate it to Mist because Mist is its own animal, but it did make yes. me think of it a few times because of really? there are some problem solving things that you have to do. Mm. Well, as an adventure game. Yeah. You're right. I, I I wouldn't exactly call it adventure so much as procedural problem solving. <laughs> Nobody what? on earth is going to fucking call the genre perceive, procedural problem solving. It's the genre, whether you think it is an adventure or not, is adventure game. Are you sure it's actually a genre adventure? Definitely. I mean, or you're just perceiving it. Adventure. No, definitely. Definitely. Okay. So, I mean, basically your your job is to like figure out clues and like try and track this goat down or whatever. Yeah. 
And like uh, you get the ability to like gather intel eventually mm-hmm. if you talk to the right people. Um, I played a couple rounds of go fish against a big pig. <laughs> That's actually accurate. So they they let you play an entire game of go fish, right? And, and I you really was, don't even need to. I was under the impression that maybe I had to win said game of go fish to get intel. Yeah, that was not the case. <laughs> I did figure out how to do the Intel button after that game. <laughs> I uh, played it all the way to the end of one game where I lost and I was like, well, fuck this. This takes a thousand years. I don't know. Yeah, it took a while. And then I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, maybe I have to win to get the Intel out of him. Like, it wasn't that hard. It came right down to the wire. And I was like, <laughs> I think I could do it. I, I won't name her name so she's not doxxed, uh, but I can imagine your girlfriend walking past and seeing you headphones on just playing Go Fish. Yeah. For like, yes, this is a very important. <laughs> it's actually it's for a podcast, I'll have you know. I'm playing Go Fish. <laughs> no, in she was heavily asleep at this point. I only play this in the silence in of the night. Wee, in the wee hours, undisturbed. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There is, um, a, there is a large pig that you play uh, Go Fish with, which is nice because like, they have things like you have to keep in mind it's for kids. So they want kids to be entertained. Doesn't have to make sense. Just like I'm playing go pig, go play with a pig. Okay. Yeah. So um, you get a number of like spy things, like gadgets. tools that are, yeah, spy gadgets that are a play off of like also James Bond things. Like mm-hmm. there's a toothbrush that's a laser. Um, there's a stick of gum that copies can, things. Can I tell you something interesting about that? Sure. Do you mind if I interject? Yeah, I, do, I don't mind. So one of the things that you may not have known about Spy Fox and Dry Serial is that there's multiple game threads that are randomly generated when you start the game. And you don't have... So I think there's like a vending machine in headquarters where you get um, the your gadgets. Yeah. You don't have to use, and you actually can't use every gadget to beat the game for one playthrough. You have the different playthroughs use different gadgets okay okay let, let, let's skip ahead to skip back did you beat the game no okay so did so you, you beat the so game you, i did beat the game oh wow okay and i think it took me uh, so this is something that we need to talk about actually administratively so i beat the game in like an hour 40 minutes maybe two hours okay so, I, I spent a lot of time playing Go Fish, so that's not really <laughs> yeah, fair. But here's the thing. So once I beat the game, I was like, oh, I'm done. I didn't think about the fact that I said we have to play for three hours. Right. Until I, I think fact. we can kind of eschew that if, if you do beat, beat the, the game. game. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll start because saying that Because we're not checking playthrough on. times when we assign these games as, as tasks. Well, the, the idea of I'll the three it. hours is really just to make sure there's enough time that we can really get to know the game. Yeah, it's for a thorough By three hours, you got it. You, you get the vibe. No, I get it. I think you'd argue 18 minutes, but I'm will I not, would argue 18 minutes. It's not permissible. Although I might have wished I played 18 minutes of Tomb Raider. Only? Only. <laughs> yeah, you know, no. I'm still haunted by the fact that I said it earned a place in my heart at the beginning of that episode. I feel like I clickbaited. But why? Word yeah. baited. Yeah, why it did definitely you did not yourself? No, because I did appreciate that I played it and that it exists. I anyway, don't even know if I appreciate that it exists. <laughs> <laughs> Although maybe because I did enjoy the, the 2013 version of the game. Yeah, I like knowing where it came from. Anyway, well, we already did that podcast. I enjoyed you the movie. I can tell you that. CDROMP.com. So thank you for that. Shout out to Angelina Jolie. She'll be yeah. our next week's guest. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah. So, your playthrough could have, in theory, used different items and even had different things happening than mine. Um, maybe. Which is pretty cool for a kid's game. Yeah. Maybe. And yeah. So to add replayability. And, and one thing I wanted to add, and sorry to kind of side swipe where you were talking about the game when you open it every single time starts a new game playing it just starts going and you have to kind of interrupt the new game starting to load your existing game right 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 you have to so the idea is like and i'm thinking about it first i was like this is annoying and stupid but then when i thought about it if the game's designed around replayability and it's for little kids who might not be really keeping track of save states or knowing what the hell is going on every time they open it the game just starts and they just start playing and it's different. Maybe they save, maybe they don't. That might be good enough for them. Yeah. A lot of kids don't realize. Yeah, maybe not. Dumb kids. Um, yes. Played Go Fish. Do you remember what the last thing you got up to was? Yeah, I I uh I I drove in the car. Okay. Yeah. 
to go that path and I followed, I don't remember who, I forget. Oh, I was tracking the, the cat lady. Yeah. And then I got to like the- Russian the, blue was her name. Yeah, yeah. I got to like the Parthenon or whatever and there was a puzzle. <laughs> yeah. And I was trying to figure that out and then I gave up. You gave up on the children's puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might have not have got the things that you needed to know the puzzle. No, I don't think so because it made no sense. <laughs> so you were trying to just brute force it. Yeah, I was. I was matching. So there was like matching pairs. So there was a skinny man, fat man, yeah. smiley face, frowny face, boy, girl, black, white. Did you talk to the um, giraffe at any point? Giraffe. <laughs> No, there wasn't a giraffe in my version. <laughs> no, well, I think there's. You're supposed to talk to her. No, there, Bob. There, no, no. And she Remember gives how you the said code. there's different versions. No, no, that there was every not a giraffe has in my version. <laughs> Did you at least go on to the? Oh, so you must have gone on to the boat with the yeah, cat. Yeah, because I danced yeah. with her and I put the bug in her back. Yeah. yeah. So here's here's one thing to note uh, about two of those things that you said. One, the car chase, and two, putting a bug in her bag in her purse. Um, Kind of what? What are those things called? Are they called quick time events where like something happens? Yeah, on screen, I know you, have you mean. Yeah, you have a limited time. amount of time to make yeah, what's a choice. It called? I, I a quick time event. We can call it. I thought it was quick time, but then yeah, it doesn't I, sound I right because quick time is a thing. No, I know, but not anymore. Mm. Well, either way, yeah. At some points in the game, which they don't teach you, you have to just kind of right. They think, don't tell you. They don't nor tell you teach or teach you. you. There's no like arrow or do it now. It's just like. Do if you don't do it, something will happen if you don't do it. And it'll allow you to keep doing it over and over and over until you yeah. figure out, which is nice. There's no real ramification besides wasting your time. Um, that also happened at one other part of the game, just to touch on uh, if you get something wrong, wasting your time. You didn't get this far, but there was one point near the end of the game when you're at the uh, uh, NOG headquarters. If you pick a wrong door... Um, in process of figuring out what's going on, there's like a very long hallway that it makes you sit and watch and walk through. And I didn't know you could skip cinematics. Oh, yeah. So I watched every single time nah, that I accidentally yeah, yeah. went down After that hallway. After I sat through a few minutes of cinematics, I was like, there has to be a button. Yeah, I was thinking and that as well. And then I, I failed I like, the, uh, the dancing thing a few times because I kept trying to skip through the cinematic of her like getting a cat lady boner. When she oh, hears the tango. Right. So then you couldn't do the event if you skipped yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cinematic, it. Yeah, because that was, was like part of the cinematic, as, cinematic. It were, yeah, as it thought. Yeah. I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, so I, I appreciated. So let me tell you, in 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 difference to Mist. Sure. It let <laughs> you know. In difference to Mist. It makes right, it sound yeah. like indifference. I know, yeah. Go ahead. Um, it let you know what was actionable and what wasn't. Right, so you had a when cursor, which was like it. a finger like this. You can't see. It's just a finger with a hand. Those if you're on YouTube, watching, you can. CDROM.com. Right? So it was just a hand with an extended pointer finger, and it would uh, it would just be the outline of a hand if it was something uninteractable, and it would be the actual filled-in version of said hand if you could click it. Now, some of the things you could just click, and then like a bug would appear or something would spin, presumably just to entertain kids. Yeah. And just to have things that are more interactable on the screen. But it did let me know what things were able for me to to click upon and it react. Whereas Mist, you just have to kind of click around and hope for the best. I'd like to touch on that real quick. And I'm looking in my notes for what the hell that's called. Click points, they're called. They call them click points. Okay. So let me just take a step back here and explain it. Within the humongous games, um, and I've only played Putt-Putt, Spy Fox. I think I actually played Fatty Bear at one point, which is like a one-hit wonder. Not even that big of a hit. Anyway, there, it's the, the studio is kind of known for within their games... There's a lot of things on screen you can click that do absolutely nothing besides just be entertaining, no. like Jim said. So let's say there's a flower. You click the flower and it'll go like, bloop, and one little thing will fall off of it. And you do it again, bloop, and another thing will fall off. And then you, they really put a lot of time and effort into these things because you could keep clicking True. it. And then in theory, like I'm just making something up. Once all the petals are off, it could like dance and then like all the petals could come back again. So there's a lot of them. And the thing that's really cool about it is that, A, I remember enjoying it as a kid because they're pretty entertaining. And B, you can do them as many times as you want stacked on top of each other, even when cinematics are happening. 
So like people could be talking and you could be, uh, well, depending, I guess, on the cinematics, I guess maybe on his walking animations and stuff like that. I'm counting as a cinematic, but you could be fucking whacking things all over his screen. Yeah. At some point I had so much stuff happening at the same time on my screen. It was absolute madness. I did, um, while I was on the ship, you know, the, uh, the Russian blue yeah. tugboat ship or whatever, yeah. you can go into like the, uh, the bridge yeah. and there's like a lottery game. Yeah. And I wasn't sure what to do at the time. So I was like there. So I was just kept pulling the handle to see if I could get like win like three pineapples. So there's like a spy fox figure that shows is one of the three slots on the, the slot machine to try and see maybe if I do it enough times, I'll win something, some sort of intel or something like that. And it uh, fair enough. Wasted maybe three minutes there. Uh, <laughs> apparently out of all the humongous games, there's two click points and I'm only going to remember one. Um, that lead to like whole animated video songs. Like in one of the putt putt games, if you click on the specific bushes, it like breaks into a song with like whole animate, like the screen changes and everything. It's like a whole big thing. And it's just something that's there you would never have known. And I think mm-hmm. it's in another one of the games, but I can't remember which one off the top of my head it was. But yeah, click points, definitely a huge part of the game. Absolutely nothing to do with getting through the game, but I could definitely see, um, you know, a kid enjoying that. Yeah, I mean that's what they're for, right? So yeah. in, in I, that I did way, some, they're and very I kind successful. Of, I kind of like felt bad that I I didn't enjoy it more because I wasn't a kid, and I was also kind of disappointed playing as an adult that it was so easy. I know you had a hard time, <laughs> although I had a hard time on Mist, and you blasted through it. So I guess yeah. I have the more childlike. Well, yeah, mind. we have different skill sets. You're, exactly, yeah, it's geared yes. towards your childlike mind. <laughs> yeah, my childlike mind was crushing it. I was like, damn, yeah, I'm really yeah. enjoy. I'm enjoying this, but I wish it was a little harder. I, I don't um. Beyond the the character of Spy Fox and yeah. the general aesthetic, I, I nothing particu- particularly jogged my memory with this game. No, you didn't remember playing it? No, not really. I mean, I remember having played it, but nothing about it made me remember specifically a section. Something within my deep mind knew somehow how to play as well. Like, I feel like I recognize what I kind of had to do Some some deep down way without really yeah. knowing it on the uh um what's the opposite of yeah. subconscious conscious uh front brain. plane conscious oh my plane yeah yeah uh i do i i, I actually now that i think about it i do kind of remember not being able to get into like the governor's house or whatever it is the the building Jim, that's now like you're above. doing monkey island again no no not that governor. <laughs> There's like some doctor or governor or statesman, elder statesman that's like above the underground club or something like that. And his door is locked yes. like forever. Yes. I do remember a feeling of frustration that like, when am I going to be able to get into this person's house? I, I, I Would you like I to know? know? Sure. So is that that's, the Nog? Yeah, that's actually uh, William the Kid's office. And it's, it has this secret entrance from inside the Nog factory. So you have to go all the way into the Nog factory and then okay. you find out, you go into, I think it's like a gym locker and it leads uh, okay, up to okay. his office. And it's actually an easier way to get in and out of the factory without having to go through the whole car thing. Go uh, right okay, up the stairs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't know. I, I went back into the factory after I rescued uh, Hugh Hefner and I tried, I boiled the piranhas. Yeah, I didn't no, you anything. freeze the piranhas. No, no, no. I freeze them to free him, but then I went back in and boiled them. Okay, I did the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is creepy that we both did it. But let me tell you one other thing. I That was one of my favorite parts of the game. Uh, when you rescue uh, Hugh Heffer, he does this, like, first of all, he's doing a Don Knotts impression, which I enjoyed to begin with. He's like, well, they, left, was, they trapped yeah, yeah. me, Andy. And <laughs> Andy. He's doing, he's going through <laughs> telling you what happened his version with his words but then uh you watch the video of what like actually happened and it's like way different and then there's yeah, also yeah, yeah, diagrams yeah. of like things happening like bad guys drawn with like crayons like, yeah, I, I put up a fight and i there was five of them and i fought them off and it was yeah, really like just he just jumped like, into their sack shoes. yeah <laughs> it was pretty good i i yeah, there yeah. was definitely some funny moments i didn't yeah. i'm not huge on puns there was a lot of them spy fox does a lot of talking yeah He's like, I guess this time the cheese has been cut. I think that was probably specifically for the dads. Yeah, definitely. Well, because like no kid would know fucking get smart. They probably yeah, no, they, know they wouldn't get a lot of these James Bond references or anything, but they would be able to pick up on the fact that some of them are jokes, even if they don't know what the joke is. Yeah. 
And they I do appreciate have the emotional intelligence to 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 laugh, even though they don't understand it. <laughs> <to> laugh. <laughs> laugh now. Use your EQ. I yeah. do appreciate that it had like uh, multi tiered humor so that like if your parents were there with you, they're like, oh, that's Don. They're doing Don Knotts and his name's Hugh Heffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like none of that's for kids. And I, I kind of get the vibe. When they were making this game, it was almost like they were entertaining themselves. The people yeah, who made I, it. I was thinking it was the like same jokes thing. for them. <laughs> if they were just kind of laughing at themselves, like you make a kid game, you know they're never going to get the joke. Yeah, but like you, you want to make it fun, so why not make a joke for yourself? Like even if you make it a joke for kids, they still might not get it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I appreciate that. And I, I was watching one. Uh, I didn't watch the whole thing, but it was like a retrospective on humongous games, and it was saying they never talked down to kids like they never yeah. dumbed it down they always just like did what they wanted to do and it was for kids and then they wanted they they really wanted to make real adventure games but that like kids could play right like buy bodyguards for bodyguards exactly speaking of uh click click t- point click events bait. whatever the fuck i called it um so apparently it's a hallmark of uh, the different series that there's things that you can do interact with that will kind of persist after you're done playing with them and one example of this and i don't know why because it was a little random when you go into well, william the kid's office which you didn't you weren't able to say right he has a kind of like a not a whiteboard but what the hell would you call it when it's like a giant piece of paper you could write on with uh, markers <coughs> i don't know you know, like what a teacher would have to teach you, like ABC one through three, and it's a giant piece of paper, and then whoosh, it flips over to the next side. Oh, like neat, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I know what you're things. talking about. I yeah, don't know. so that was there with like all different markers for no reason. So of course I'm like drawing all over it. I drew a dick, obviously, Whoa, and a then child I, page. I didn't know what was gonna happen with that, and I exited, and then there it is, just fucking the dick, just still there. Like when you leave it, it's still like now it's just in the scene, even when you go and come back. It's just like a dick drawn there all the time, which I guess is cool if like you're fucking around a lot. You're going in and out for the kids. I assume when they play it, I would actually like to because I'd like to watch a kid play this game. It sounds very Yikes, creepy. Not after you've played it. <laughs> no dicks drawn when the when the little chil- children's around. Oh, uh, children. But it would be interesting to see the way that uh, a kid went through it. And I remember them saying that adults are way more focused on getting through. And okay. kids are way more focused on just enjoying what's there. Like I'm right. going out of like, and what's I, I think, next? How do I solve it? What's this? I'm not like, oh, I want to click every different animal to see what they right. do. Right, and that may be why they included so many click point things. Right, to your yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, whatever they set out to do with this game, I think they nailed it. Um, and I think, as you mentioned, um, some of the things that weren't. Uh, so ideal for an adult while playing, maybe a little too easy and uh, a lot of animations, like f- going from scene to scene, Spy Fox, like takes yeah, his time I, to I walks. found it to be annoying, right? Like an example of my, uh, cinematic frustrations was like getting the, the things, the spy tools out of the vending machine. Yeah. Like, like just give me the suction cups. Like I have to click, give me the suction cups. And then I have to hear Dr. Quackers talk for like 30 Come seconds. On. And so, like, after the first one, I was like, hit, escape, hit, escape, hit, escape. I was like, just give me the fucking tools, man. It's exactly. Because you want to get through it. You don't want to yeah, just yeah. enjoy no, it. No, but, yeah, I mean. Some of them I, were pretty funny. The diagrams. No, I know. Like I know. Wiley Some Coyote of them I, I stuck diagrams. through for a little bit. But I, I, like, once I got it, you know, I get it. <laughs> even and though I, I get it. Even though your job while playing it is to soak it all up, you still, I like, cannot, you know, I got like, I sucked it off. You know? <laughs> no, I got it. I suck, you know, you I have suck, a couple sips of water, you go, well, it's water. It's wet. Yeah, it's wet. Yeah, I do get it. Yeah, the I fucking it. song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, yeah, should we be like, <laughs> I mentioned going back and playing with things. I mentioned drawing the dick. I mentioned uh, long animations. Uh, kind of being used as a punishment the different amount of threads um mini games so there are yeah. mini games in the game one of which you mentioned which was go fish which in theory if i didn't one mention wanted that to, you did you said you played go fish with the pig. oh okay i all right i didn't consider that a mini game because I, I i found something the submarine game was like a very specific mini game well i was gonna go to the next is that the one on your watch i believe so yeah. i forgot to ever do that so I'm, I did glad, that I'm glad that you did that. That was the only one that I did. I didn't realize that Go Fish would that you would consider it a minigame. But well, it I mean, I guess you're right. It is a game within the game. Yeah. But the other one was like 
a, a, like a video game within the game. Yeah. You know? And I think they're also known for, or I think Ron Gilbert likes to do that, have games within games. Which okay. Ron Gilbert probably had nothing to do with, but I, I enjoyed that within Donkey Kong 64 when they had the, uh, the arcane oh. games that you had to play. Oh, so you're saying Donkey Kong 64 you? is a great I'm game. I'm saying it's a very Ron Gilbert uh, thing to do, my <laughs> I'll friend. I'll take that as a compliment. Yes, you may take that as a compliment. People can hate on that game all they want, but I Jim, really enjoy sorry, it. And the soundtrack Jim, we, is so Jim, good. Jim, there's only so much internet. We don't have time oh to talk God. about Donkey Kong 64. Maybe like, once we, in a we while. We actually do have time. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me say this once we've knocked out enough of these pc games if every once in a while if people request it let if me we just get, say it's from get, the late 90s if we get three different youtube comments yeah if people are requesting it we'll yeah. do a special episode where so they they'll Donkey make Kong you play 64. donkey Kong 64 Correct. i haven't played it in a few months well it'll it's be been a, probably over we'll a have year. to play for three probably, hours maybe over and do a retrospective over on two years how you think probably about it. yeah or three years. and that's probably a good point to, to take a quick pause real, right here and, and let everyone know um we want to know what you would like us to play jim and i take turns picking the games but we want to know uh what you would like us to play and why uh, so please send us an email to the boys at cdromp.com and uh, we'll give that a read and get your uh, request into our queue some way, somewhere uh, down the line. The queue. Thank you so much. Into the queue. So let me wrap up Spy Fox in terms of, and Dry here in terms of the game real quick, and then I'll talk about some final details, and then we'll wrap sure, it all sure, the way sure, up. Sure, 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 sure. So, blah, 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 you play the game, you beat the game. Uh, dang, dang. I did not play it over again, even though I knew that there were multiple threats. I should have. Because so 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 let me let me uh, point of order. Sure. So is this something that you knew or you researched the game in detail before you ended up playing the game? I go for the chim approach and I research after I finish playing the game. Right. So, but I, so you knew from experience that there were multiple. I played the game, yeah. fin- beat it. I, w- I didn't do three hours. Then I learned, oh, shit, there's multiple threads. Uh, okay, okay, okay. And I thought to myself, hmm, I didn't play three hours. I could continue playing the game no. to hit the three hours and try a different thread but okay. you know if wants and butts were candies and nuts we'd all have a merry guten tag and whatever uh, dwight says that time <laughs> it's, it's pretty close i think <laughs> it's pretty fairly close yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah i didn't do that but and this is a perfect segue um they the games came out on uh pc and i think mac right in the 90s and then in the 2000s-ish at some point, somebody picked up uh, the rights. The company had actually been bounced around all over the place. Like a French company bought it who also then bought Atari and then they became Atari and then Atari owned it and then Atari started going bankrupt. So they sold it. Anywho, um, they put out the game on uh, Wii, Nintendo Wii, because of the uh, ability to use like hand on screen mm-hmm, yeah and okay. apparently it was super janky it's yeah, the I same exact that. game but apparently like uh i don't remember what about it didn't work besides the fact that it was like accidentally sped up like because they're using this like scum vm on the mm, wii something VM scum yeah something real hyper janky and then they got yeah. sued i think because they weren't supposed to be using scum VM interesting on the way okay. yeah there's some kind of Whatever. strange agreement. Oh, because I think Scum VM is open source and you can't just put it on a platform without making We're some kind open. of whatever. Something like that. You can well, look you it should up. be able to if it's open. Yeah. That, well, I, don't, I have no idea. There's some like kind opposite. of No, there's some kind of agreement. But either oh, way, agreement. Either way, they fucked over the agreement. And yeah, uh, there was a whole big thing. And they, so they, they took them down. Everyone said like, wow, this is probably the most ass Yeah, I mean, it's for the best if it's not good. Yeah. I think it came out in a bunch of other consoles. Also can't remember that. Maybe hop on Wikipedia. <laughs> right, find right. Why don't you let the people Wikipedia? Skip ahead, skip ahead, skip ahead. Eventually, this company called something that sounds like toto or taboo uh, or Tido. i think it's inatech definitely not inatech well though shout out uh, office space can't remember what the name is should have that note as well i hope you're really see this is the good part we have so much shoddy information that we're not going to get right. many people correcting us because <laughs> they're like luckily oh, these, these there's so few on. people that care or even know this is good. yeah shout that out will never all. be corrected shout out to all eight to ten of you ideally yeah we love you Actually, ideally, it's zero, and then we could just scream <laughs> well, into the void. Us too. I watch them. I, I I could tell you that. I do them. Why would I watch them? That's true. You lived it. I can't remember the name of the company, but anyway, it's a company. 
uh, based out of California, and all they do is buy old games, the right to old games, and re-release yeah. them like on Steam, which I yeah, kind of okay. respected. Uh, respect. When I first heard about the company, I was like, ah, oh, they just want because they're doing like nothing with it. They just kind of wanted to buy it up to make money. And then when I found out that they really like have a whole big catalog of all kinds of games that yeah, they're trying so to re-release on Steam, I was like, so, that's pretty legit. So it's a it's a thing. I mean, I don't know about recently, but it's a thing. It, it's a thing. Like so, the a company bought up. You know, a few times that, like you said, the the rights to Atari in name yeah. and production have been bought and sold a few times. Yeah. And also like uh, Coleco and Intellivision and Commodore and all of these like retro uh, like uh, g- console producers and game producers and developers mm-hmm. have been like the rights have been bought and sold a few times. And now people are just putting them out in name to do things just to make money, just holding the, the, the IP to make money. But it's also... Two things. One, yes, making money. But two, you are kind of preserving it and making it so another generation can play them. Like, I got mine on Steam. It was super easy. I think, truthfully, one day, when I produce children with having sex... Sounds gross. Maybe not even that way. We'll see what All robots right. can do at the time. Robot I think I would. Sex. I think I would, I would make my kids play this game. I think that they, you know, sitting them in front of these humongous entertainment games, you open it up. And they can just click their way around. I think it's a, I think we often talk about, does it hold up? I think if you're a kid, it definitely still holds up this game. I I had nothing about it that I was like, oh, if I was a kid, this would be fucked. Or like the controls work really well. The inventory system works really well. It's got uh, really good voice acting, plenty of animations. The difficulty level is probably just hard enough to keep kids scratching their head. Um, I enjoyed it as much as a fat old man in a basement can enjoy a children's game. Right. TM. So I would say, yeah, in terms of graphics and gameplay, like the cartoon stylized nature, like it because it's like big, bold lines and basically just like an animated cartoon and it doesn't like rely on 3D models and like extensive graphics, it like completely translates and looks yeah like good it we've looks also, it like pops you know we've gone in terms of like what graphics can do and what people want we've gone from like what we can do and keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and now i don't know at what point we started to roll over that now that like it's super cool to do older styled animation like to make a game that looks 8-bit or 16-bit or right. looks made of cartoons or make well, eventually a you reach of you old, reach the uncanny valley right well no eventually we'll plow through the uncanny valley and just have <laughs> super well i was gonna say something about porn but I'll yeah just, i know I'll just, yeah. uh, i'll put a dot 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 in there <laughs> yeah yeah etc cetera, etc cetera. et cetera and so forth but yeah, yeah we'll get through the uncanny valley as scarily enough i mean look uh deep fakes is cl- like pretty close already Right, but they, yeah, they're right, we're crazy. not going to get into the psychology. We're not going to get into deep fake yeah. porn that I'm handling. We're not? No, we're not. We don't have time oh, for, okay. for yeah, any I, of No, that. we could find time. I'll earmark we, some well, two if, minutes. Well, if three people requested to do an episode on that <laughs> yeah. while playing Donkey Kong 64, I, I hope, um, and, and I don't even want to put this to us until we're, we've got like a good amount of games under our belt, uh, maybe um, us playing a game while talking about it actually maybe some weird ones you know we'll see we'll see in the future anyway, yeah i mean so let me let me wrap up uh sure. spy fox here Chortle. all the way yeah so what i did do although i didn't go back and play it again i actually did go back and play it again but not that much and i did it on my phone because they re-released uh all of pretty much all of the humongous entertainment games on uh ios and android interesting and here's the thing it is the same exact game and the using your phone actually works pretty well because it's the same as a mouse. There's no real click and drag that you need to do. Right, just tap just, instead of clicking. Yeah. Everything's pretty big. The thing that drove me absolutely fucking bananas is that they didn't preserve the aspect ratio. So they have it stretched to the whole screen, mm. which and there's no option to change it, which was tweaking me to no end. Maybe there's a way to do it that I didn't find because I didn't look incredibly hard. But when there's uh four three stretched to sixty nine, squid and squished. Oh my god! If, if that's all they had to do, and I would have had no qualms because it actually looked, sounded, was like exactly the same. Huh? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Well, 
Uh, I was actually going to tell you when you were doing your normal amount of bitching about playing the game, I was going to tell you that you could play it on your phone just laying on the couch. And no. it's pretty much the exam experience, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have allowed it anyway. No, nah, I'd enjoy that less. <laughs> Can we prove that? Because you do enjoy being laying on the couch. Uh, yeah, but not like having to do something. Like the oh, benefit of laying, laying on a couch is silently... Is, and yeah, motionless is, is resting my body in between though. doing other things. <laughs> Speaking of which, I still have my dream. Um, seeing as we're doing this, to have a period um, appropriate laptop for which I could play the games on. Right, and and download like MS DOS, some shit like that. Yeah, onto it. Yeah. Well, MS DOS. Well, yeah. Say. So, period appropriate operating system as well. Yeah. So I can actually play the games. For right now, the ha, being able to get them on Steam is so easy. And I've actually been. We don't make any money off of this. At least we don't yet. I haven't figured out a way. But I have um, in all of the YouTube uh, down in the descriptions. There's links to Steam to get the games for each game. And I think I have in the podcast description as well. So um, if we haven't mentioned it, uh, I'll mention it now. You can get this game on Steam. There's uh, Spy Fox packs where you could buy yep. all the Spy Fox games. There's also a giant humongous entertainment pack. I don't remember how much they were. I think this game by itself was like $6 or something. Yeah, I think if you get the whole Spy Fox pack, I think it's 20 bucks or 25 And It's you actually get, a really good four deal games. for all these games. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I believe if you want to go four. grab that, if you have younger... Um, you know, offspring, cousins, uh, neighborhood, youth. I definitely think it's worth picking them up, sitting them down in front of the computer and letting them have a, a whack through it. And uh, if you want to get a little gruntled from uh, nostalgia, if this is a game that you did play before, I don't think you're going to be let down. It definitely still yeah. holds up for sure. So, Jim, any final yeah. words on uh, Spy Fox in Dry Cereal 1997 before we wrap up our administrative duties here? I would say no, I do not specifically have any. Did you enjoy it? Be honest thoughts. with us. Yes and no. I enjoyed some parts of it. Um, You're looking up your notes to see if you enjoyed it? No. Did no, I, no. I see the screen changing. Did I? And let me just type this in. Did I enjoy it? Because <laughs> no, I am the creator of Computron. Yeah. No, I mean, that's tough. I wanted to enjoy it more. How about that? I I kind of also feel I, that way. I enjoyed that I kind of remembered his voice and demeanor and timbre. Oh, but and, but timbre. but I I didn't like it I wasn't titillated by any of the, the 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 gameplay and like you know but but it's a kids game so you know what are you going to do? Like I I can't expect to be completely entertained by a child's puzzle solving game you know yeah. like it's you know yeah. what i mean like but i did enjoy the the nostalgia of it i can yeah. give you that but and that's in, in terms of, of just like a cold read playing the game as if i never played it before i don't think i would enjoy it if i had never played it before and you didn't know it was for kids yeah sure yeah. already yeah that, so i think that's kind of the the way that we have this podcast phrased for lack of a better word that's all right Cause it's just an analysis. You know what I mean? Like when I'm playing it, I'm not thinking like, Oh, do I really want to be playing this right now? I'm thinking like, Oh, let me see. Let me analyze this. Mm. And I agree with your, uh, wow. I can't think of any fucking words today. I, I agree with your analysis. I, okay. I wanted to like it more because I was amused by it and it felt yeah. good. The nostalgia felt good. And I, I liked the, the colors and, um, uh, apparently people really praised the music. I thought the music was good but kind of yeah it was good not i thought the monkey forefront. island music was probably better i watched a youtube video yesterday as some chick playing the <laughs> monkey on scumbar theme on pipe organ yeah dude there's a lot of people that do like covers of all the monkey island game music it's you crazy know, we uh you know i i think i've said it before but eventually we will have to play monkey island games that some that people actually like I tried. <laughs> I know. I know you did. We're gonna have to wait a while at this point because we're too. We're, we're living fucking. Ron Gilbert's gonna think we're yeah, stalking. Yeah, him. he's living rent free in our heads. At the yeah, moment. we can't. We're we can't have to give him a break. Yeah. So I, I agree with you, Jim. Um, I finished the game and I thought to myself, I look forward to when I could share this uh, with my kids or, or somebody else's kids, yeah. or whatever children in my yeah. basement at the time, um, because I, I I really like it, but. <laughs> 
I, can't, I you know, I'm a grown ass adult. I'm not getting the same vibes that I did. Um, yeah, yeah. Just Agreed. Just kind of a period yeah. in time. So there's one, uh, two last things that we have to do. Okay. Okay. First, plugging ourselves again. Uh, if you want to request a game, I know I already mentioned, but just real quickly, uh, send us an email at theboys at cdromp.com. And uh, secondarily, go to the website, cdromp.com. And that's where you could look through. It's probably the easiest uh, and best way to look through all of our previous episodes. Um, you could find out where the links to the different podcasts, the YouTube channel, bing, boom, bop. You have everything there. Um, there's one thing that we have to do to close out the episode. Jim. Yes. Next week's game is your selection. Mm. I have no prior knowledge of what you're going to choose. Okay. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, we will be playing the 1995 smash hit by Electronic Arts titled Command and Conquer. Really? Wow. Yeah, why not? Totally. Total. I see. I like that. Total genre change. Yeah. We've, bound, we've done a lot of. Uh, so um, it is on Steam. Um, okay. The original version is not available, as you can imagine, but the remastered collection is there, which allows you to switch to original graphics. Then that's what I will do. And yeah. Make sure that I so have I have, correctly. as of this second, send it to you in Slack, the, the link that I have already purchased. Now, what's the legality of me talking about my feelings about it as of right now? No, you am I allowed to no. give a reaction? Bob, I have to Bob, wait all the way to the, the next podcast. That you, I, what, the you the fact that ask. you were even shocked by the genre change, we might have to edit out. <laughs> There's true shock <laughs> as well. Yeah. I really had no idea what you were going to say. And then as you got through each part, EA, yeah. I was like, EA? What no, I know. I was, was I, it EA at the add, time? Is, uh, Are you sure about that? I think it's The developer EA now. Is, is credited as Petroglyph. And Lemon Sky Studios. This is uh, uh, info by Steam, so this might be the developer of the remastered collection. True. Well, I but guess I imagine Jim, give the us publisher the being Electronic Arts probably was the original, but all this information will be vetted. So here's kind of a, a, for an interesting week. thing to add, um, and I don't know how much we went into it on previous episodes, but a lot of the time, the people who made it aren't the people that published it. Yeah. Which is kind of a weird idea now because everyone just kind of publishes their own games, I'm pretty sure. Or publishes, I guess, maybe through Steam. But yeah, so yeah, so Steam kind of made the, the self publishing proliferated. But even b- a little bit before that, big publishers were gobbling up little <laughs> studios and, and then publishing it themselves in that way. You know, you said big publishers in the exact same way as big punisher. And I just couldn't. <laughs> You know, the big pub (laughs) hits you with the big gub. (laughs) No need to make you check cub. Oh, great. Uh, It edited itself very nicely. Oh, one final word, and I'm sure I've done about six different final words. Um, Ron Gilbert, in an interview, talking about... Can I just... Is he (laughs) CD-Ron? Yes, CD-Ron Gilbert. He could be. All right, continue. Um he had mentioned, uh, and people were asking why he stopped making adventure games, I think for adults. I don't know if it was why he stopped making adventure games for adults or stopped making games for a while. One of the two things. Um, he felt that his games didn't do that well because mm. everyone was talking like, how could you make, you know, smash hits like Monkey Island and et cetera, Maniac Mansion, and then, you know, go make kids games. You know, we think you'd continue going on. He was like, I'd never felt that they were a huge hit. So at the time, Sierra was like crushing yeah. the adventure game world. Yep. So apparently there's a series called King's Quest. And apparently that was kicking the shit King's out of Quest. Ron Gilbert's yeah. games. Yeah. It sounds familiar. I don't remember it. All I can think of is the, that uh, NES line of games where they had those like IRL tournaments where um you had to phone in and like they had, it was, I forget, ah, shit, I don't even remember the name of the games. So they had... uh. You had to solve the puzzles in game and then call in and then you could win like a sword. Yeah, that might have been something like King something. I think there was <laughs> yeah. an angry video game nerd episode about that, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, they had like a huge contest about that. Yeah. You had to like get to the end puzzle. And then the and company then went out of business before they could do like the fourth game and the fourth thing. But some there, they did like well, you know what? Look it up, angry video game nerd. Maybe we'll put a link in the description below if we can. Uh, yeah, why don't you just everyone that. that's listening listen 
listen and watch the entire catalog of James Rolfe. I was going to say, here you do. Pause this right here. Yeah. Only a couple minutes left of this episode. Go watch all of Angry Video oh, Games. It was a 16 seasons. Go to Cinemasker, uh, <laughs> yeah. YouTube channel, and watch every single AVGN. I might watch a couple tonight now that I self-triggered myself. Self-triggered. I, haven't, I haven't watched it in a while, but it was actually about a year from when I was doing my last uh, watch through, which I'll have to find out where I left off because I did not get all the way up to date. Mm. And then I have to go back and watch them continue again as well. I haven't watched continue in a long time. Yeah. If you, I guess if you're looking for other uh, YouTube channels <laughs> to watch about retro gaming, uh, Angry Video Game Nerd, classic for a long time. Yep. Uh, Pat the NES Punk, although I haven't watched yep. it in, a l- in so long. <laughs> Pat Country. Do you do your do your Pat Country impression? I haven't. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pat. I haven't, I haven't. I haven't watched it in so long that I'm doing it on like very rough memory. It's not Hi, good. Pat Country. It's not very good. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, continue with a question yeah. mark. Who were uh, semi discovered and put on by JonTron, and they got a nice little uh, bump by there. Now JonTron's like an internet. He's sensation st- he's still making videos he's like once every 18 months yeah, yeah and they get like millions and millions of uh yeah. anyway last anyway, final word bob yeah i guess we'll end this episode out um thank you so much for tuning in um i'm looking forward to playing command and conquer i won't give any commentary which i'm dying to and yes, uh we hope that uh you're able to play along as well get your three hours in and do, do the best you can and then uh play the next episode which will be coming out next week and uh just get jiggy with it jim Na 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 na. Thanks so much, everybody. Good. We night. love you. From my family to yours. Alfie ah. to say goodbye. <laughs>